We're so pleased that you can join us for this special evening to benefit LGBT homeless youth. And also the US premiere of writer-director Max Emerson's feature debut, Hooked. I'm here to introduce Max, who is incredibly, incredibly loving and caring and kind and such a big person. I just cannot thank you and, and, and love you more for what you've done for us. So thank you, Max. And welcome, Max. Hello, my name is Max. Thank you guys so much for being here. This means so much to me that you guys are, are here to support this film, Alley Forty Center, New Fest. Um, I mean, please just sign up for all their emails, if nothing else. Check out what they're doing. All the, I mean, if you can do more than just show up for films and you want to come volunteer at the Alley Forney Center, if you want to just give them all of the money in your wallet right now, I highly recommend it. <laughs> there is no better way to spend your money than by helping this foundation. Um, so the entire reason I started doing social media, Instagram, YouTube, all of that was so that I could produce projects that I believed in. So I really owe it to all of you guys for helping make this happen. So thank you. The role of the actor who played Tom, Sean Armand. The cinematographer, Olivier Lassant. As well as the producer, Melissa Llewellyn. And you may have seen him on Logo, or MTV's Girl Code, or Guy Code, or Late Night with Seth Meyers. Comedian Matteo Lane will be your moderator for the night. <laughs> Give it up for Max and everyone else you saw here, and put so much hard work into this. Is this the first time, like, you guys have seen this, or no? But I mean, like, in this kind of setting? Uh, this is the second time. I saw this in Toronto. Oh, yeah. great. And what do you think when you watch yourself? I was just as nervous before <laughs> as I was in Toronto, but yeah, it's the same. I'm relieved every time. Yeah? I mean, you were great. Give it up. What a wonderful performance. They were so good. So, Max, when you uh, when did you have the idea of making a film that would then directly contribute to homeless LGBTQ youth? I actually wrote this a while ago. I think I was a year out of college, and I got pissed off about something, and I wrote this script about how I just wanted to have this message of you know imploring each other to just take better care of each other and be more responsible with everything we're doing. And then the first thing that kind of brought Ali Forney to my attention in all of this was uh, the, the first project I did through social media was to crowdsource a book that I wrote and distribute that. And I gave away copies for free to anyone in high school or college or just wanted a free copy. And dozens and dozens of kids reached out and they were sharing their stories. And a lot of them were homeless. A lot of them were afraid of becoming homeless if they were to come out of the closet. So it just seemed like the best logical step. You raised over $170,000 through crowdfunding website. Uh, what methods did you use and what advice can you give about the process? Um, we used every method possible to get attention for it. We reached out to every influencer we could. I fake dated Kyle Krieger for a month. Uh, you fake dated Kyle Krieger for a month? Oh, oh, yeah. I fake date Kyle Krieger for a month? I bet he'd be into that. Well, I'm... it's part of their eight point plan called abs. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got, yeah, anyways. Uh, we, yeah, we did this, I mean, we went all out. We fake dated for a month and did this whole sappy love story that, like, was this, like, hard, we were, like, exclusively dating in two days. And then we broke up after three weeks. Watch the video where basically Bianca Del Rio and Willem, amazing, amazing drag queens, volunteered their time to. Uh, help us resolve the age-old question of what happens when an Instagram couple breaks up. Who keeps the followers? Um, <laughs> the answer was we oil wrestled in our underpants. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I, everything we could do to get people's attention. We went shameless, we went classy, we had Todrick Hall pop in and tell me to keep a shirt on if I want to talk about something serious. We did that too. Uh, we did everything we could do. Did you connect with the LGBTQ homeless community to prepare for the film? <laughs> um, I guess not directly, but uh, Max was telling me a ton of stories at the beginning and throughout the film um, about how they all want to be like the next Beyonce or whatever. They have all this energy. So I... They're almost there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, no, not, not directly, but yeah, I, I, I'm fully supportive of them and everything that they do. Just in talking to everybody, the most interesting thing I noticed from these kids is that none of them, not a single one, acts like a victim. 
I know more miserable millionaires than the kids at these shelters. And that was one of the things that I think Connor was absolutely amazing about capturing, is that no matter what he was doing, he was having fun. And it, I just, I, he really pulled it off. Like there was never like an anger. There was always this, this other thing he was able to do to make things more interesting. Um, what was it like working with Max as a director? It was great. I mean, it was, it was a party the entire time. It's such a, a party in a good way. I mean, it was so fun. Like he, oh, you know, with such, at times, as, as we saw, a very intense material, um, he kept it, you know, up, and he really shared some of his, you know, some of his life and some of, you know, what we really need to know to then, you know, tell the story. But every day, no matter what, he brought such a great life to it, and has. It's amazing just to see him interact with an entire company of people and how much he brightens up everyone's day and how excited everyone was there. And just to be a part of this incredible benefit and to fundraise for situations just like this, it's, it's truly amazing. Um, so as a producer, I would say that working with Max as a director, he's all nervous, he's like, what is she going to say, <laughs> is a producer's dream. Uh, when I first came onto the project, to touch back what you said, uh, Max had already raised, I think, 90% of the funds, um, which wasn't a lot. But when I met with him, <laughs> but when I met with him, um, the story was amazing. He had so much heart, so much drive, um, and I just—it was a project that I, I just really I could not say no to, amongst many other reasons. His energy is just contagious. You meet this guy one time, and you're like, I'll never forget him. Um, with so the first time I met Max in New York City, he actually we met at some uh, it was like a dim sum type of place or whatever, and he was like, did you bring did you bring any uh, workout clothes? I was like, no, I'm in jeans right now. And he's like, let's go to the gym. I was like, what? So he took me to TJ Maxx, got me some gym shorts, and we went to the gym. It's like that's the guy he is. He just wants to fill his day with as much as possible. And look how hard working he is. Twenty eight year old. Yeah. Unbelievable. He puts this together. I don't know how he does it. So, if you ever get a chance to meet this guy, never forget him. I'll, I'll be out front. Look at your Chinese food and some new shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a first great date. first date. Sure. Funny anecdote. A lot of the crew that Melissa brought on was from Jamaica and they knew nothing about me. And we'd be on set, uh, on the street, shooting things. And people would be like, oh, what's going on? What's this? And this crew would be like, oh, it's this autobiography of this model who used to be a hooker. And I'm like, Shh, okay, it's believable, great. Um, no, I, I actually decided to write this after I walked in on my boyfriend at the time having a threesome. Oh, God, Ooh. wow. That's... Could have been worse. <laughs> um, so I was just pissed off. I was living in Miami. Um, I actually screened two short films I made in college. and. 600 people showed up, but they were pretty much all at the bar, like having a party the whole time. So I realized that, like, a message the, the message of the films was more to like the straight community about internalized homophobia and the things you do when you're hiding a part of yourself. And it was more a message for the general audience who wasn't there, it was essentially a gay bar at this thing, uh, about, you know, the language we use, things like using the word gay, like, I don't want to do that, that's gay, like, how actually damaging that is without even realizing. And so I wanted to write something that was geared towards our own community about just trying to make sure we have the right priorities in place. Uh, and I was just trying to do it in a way that, that didn't trivialize um, any of it. Um, but it, it did take a lot of rewriting from the very, very first stage. I mean, it was, I put it down for like two years and then picked it up again and rewrote 75% of it and, you know, to, to make it as realistic as possible. We had seven people yeah, sleeping in Andres' apartment at one point during our shoot because one of the housing, one of the Airbnbs we booked was so bad. Yeah. So we had like five crew members on top of Andres and I sleeping in his one bedroom apartment. So thank you Andres for helping us get this thing on budget. I mean, you guys had to make out a lot. You know, that can be awkward sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've never seen two straight guys more into each other than these two. I was like, oh, so you guys are moving to LA? You're like, yeah, we're gonna share a bedroom. And then their mother's like, I knew it. He moved to Los Angeles and becomes gay. <laughs> No, well, I was hoping for more on that. But you <laughs> sort of sat there, so. I mean, my, my first shooting day was all the bed scenes, so it was like jumping right into. So his it was, was a like, diaper, and yours was making out with a man. Yes, sir. You started yeah. them easy, Max. No, it's great. We tried. Yeah, it could be like a coffee scene or anything. Okay, like you getting a diaper. This isn't friends. All right. <laughs>